Seven months ago, I quit my hair loss regimen, including finasteride, minoxidil, and derma rolling. And, as you can see, I still have hair. But, what have I done to keep my hair and actually regrow my hair? I'm gonna talk about that in this video. And just for a bit of comparison, this is what my hair looked like while I was on medication with the same length of hair as I have right now. As you can see, it's not as good as it was on medication, but at least I haven't lost everything and I am making progress. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you a few things that I'm currently doing to combat my hair loss naturally. The reason why I stopped taking medication was because I do not want to take medication and I tried to view hair loss as something which is actually a physical resemblance of my overall health. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Number one, the first thing that I stopped doing was drinking coffee. I didn't say caffeine, I meant coffee. I used to drink about 10 cups of black coffee a day. This is something that I've stopped completely now. I only drink green tea right now or herbal tea, which is so much better. I actually made a video about this, quitting coffee, which I put out in spring of 2023, where I lasted about 60 days without any coffee. Because coffee is a vasoconstrictor, because it actually constricts the blood flow in your body. So it kind of works the opposite way of minoxidil, because as you know, minoxidil actually is a vasodilator. It actually helps to bring more blood flow to the place where you apply minoxidil, which if we talk about hair loss, is the hair which is also why when you take the oral tablet with minoxidil, you see an increase in hair growth all across your body. But I quit coffee, still taking some caffeine with green tea, as I said, but no like energy drinks or anything like that, because I strongly believe that coffee is different to other caffeinated beverages. Because coffee is very bitter, it's very strong, it's roasted, it has a completely different chemical structure than other natural caffeinated beverages, such as green tea, on top of that, green tea doesn't have nearly as much caffeine as coffee. And now I've gone about, I would say, two months without coffee again, and I feel great, I don't miss it. There are some days where I don't drink any tea at all, so I don't have that caffeine addiction. And I believe that this has really helped me with my hair loss because also another downside with coffee is that it stimulates your adrenal glands and produces a lot of stress in your body, which makes you more anxious, more jittery, and it's very negative for your mental health. It was an obvious thing to just cut it out, which has helped me tremendously. What it can do for hair, it's actually made my hair not feel as dry as it used to, and on top of that, I just feel better generally. And I think, like I said, health and hair go hand in hand, so when I feel better, my hair is better. Number two, coping with stress. This is something that I touched upon many times before, but I'm gonna bring it up again. I can guarantee you that stress is what caused yours as well as my onset of hair loss. Back in the day, I had beautiful hair and then I experienced a very stressful event in my life or a series of stressful events in my life that I didn't cope with. During that time, I began to shed a lot of hair, hair that never grew back, um, and I'm almost certain it's the same for you. So if that's the case, please, give me a little comment and we can talk about that in the comment section. But the way I've been coping with my stress and specifically the stress that I've experienced is that I have a little critic inside my head, a little voice that keeps telling me I'm not good enough, keeps telling me that I should do better, keeps telling me I shouldn't have done those mistakes in the past. That can be very detrimental because what happens is I'm constantly just stuck inside my head and I can't really move forward. Even though I'm super driven and I want to do a lot of things, I want to achieve a lot of things, I'm always held back by that voice because it's essentially telling me I do not deserve success that's coming my way, I don't deserve to be happy, I don't deserve to be loved, etc, etc. But one main thing that's actually helped me tremendously, and this kind of began during the summer, is that I've started to cultivate my relationship with God. So now I pray every morning when I wake up, I talk about how thankful I am, I talk about my day, worries that I have. It's amazing and if you're religious yourself or have some sort of religious belief, I would highly recommend that you start to cultivate your relationship with God because that's what I've been doing and it's worked very well for me. And also by doing so, I now also feel so much more forgiven and at peace with myself, my past, who I am, who I want to be, and I feel safe within myself. On top of that, things like meditation, yoga, journaling are also super good. Anything that can get you focusing on one thing and not being stuck inside your head, you know, reliving past experiences, coming to peace with things, maybe you should see a psychologist, anything to lower your stress is super good. 
If you're getting some value from this video, I would really, really appreciate a like because I recorded this video once already, but it turned out there was a clip missing, so now I've canceled all other plans today and I'm just gonna make this video for you guys. So if you're getting some value from it, please hit the like button because it's gonna help this channel massively. So if we can get 200 likes on this video, I would be so appreciative. Number three, becoming super strict about my diet. I've tried keto, I've tried becoming vegan, I've tried pescatarian, vegetarian, now I'm doing carnivore second time around. I tried it in June of this year and I only lasted about 12 days and I found it really hard to do. But now I'm giving myself a second try, which is awesome. I'm trying to eat a little bit more diverse red meat before I only ate minced beef, but that was too boring. I felt nauseous every time I ate. I was constipated. This time around, I'm also constipated five days in but I'm eating more variety of red meats. So hopefully it's not gonna be as monotone and boring as it was before. But even up until November this year, before I decided to go on the carnivore diet, I still was very picky about my diet. I cut out sugar, I cut out dairy, and I tried to keep processed food to a minimum. And this because I became very observant while I was eating different foods, how my body reacted, did I get pimples, was my scalp itchy? I mean, just two weeks ago, I was cooking a homemade pizza, and the day after in the morning, I woke up and I was just scratching my scalp. So I think that could be a good thing for yourself to do as well, because if there are foods that you are allergic to or have some sort of intolerance to, then it will give you physical symptoms. I mean, if people can get diarrhea, obviously people can get other things such as an itchy scalp. And on top of that, I'm really interested in going into the carnivore diet because I do think I have seborrheic dermatitis, which I can show you a video of here from the other day, that I get these red, very itchy spots on my scalp, which never tend to go away, and I have a very flaky scalp. And I've read numerous posts from people going on the carnivore diet who've managed to get rid of the flaky scalps. Again, linking health to hair and hair to health. So looking at the symptoms of my hair, my scalp, the environment in my scalp, and thinking if I can change that with my diet. So that is what I'm currently doing in terms of that. Number four, sleeping a lot. So now I actually sleep between eight and nine hours a day. And I think if you quit drinking coffee and you're not reliant on the energy boost that coffee brings, which is super strong, super nice, I loved it. Hence why I drank 10 cups of coffee a day. Sleep is gonna be super important. So eight to nine hours I can strongly recommend. For me personally, I don't go to bed as late anymore. I go to bed at around nine o'clock, wake up at five in the morning, especially now when I've taken on a full-time job. So before I used to run my own company now I work a nine-to-five Monday to Friday and I still run my own company on the side which means I'm working a lot more than I used to work however I'm not productive past 9 p.m. anyways things I would fill my time with is you know scrolling on Instagram watching series you know cuddling and which is there's obviously needs to be time for that too but it doesn't have to be so late and I love the fact now that I'm waking up 5 a.m. after having a good night's sleep from 9 p.m. and I have a couple of hours before I go to work so I can actually work out, I can journal, I can pray, I can take my time and just be in the now and not having to stress every hour of the day. So in terms of sleep that is what is working for me but you really should prioritize your sleep so you get that very well needed recovery. Number five, super simple. I don't wash my hair as often as I used to. The reason being is because I don't think it's natural to wash your hair every single day of the week. On top of that, I still don't use any shampoo or conditioner. I haven't used this for a very, very long time and it works well for me. On top of that, here in Sweden, we have very hard water, which some studies actually seem to suggest can cause calcification. So by just washing it maybe once or twice a week, my scalp doesn't get as dry and my hair feels a lot nicer. So if you're from Scandinavia, this could probably work for you. Number six, I try to be more appreciative of the hair that I have. This kind of relates back to the stress point that I brought up, but literally this has changed so much for me. Even though I'm still concerned about my hair loss, yes, that is true, I actually try to give myself good positive messages and thanking my body for working so well. Because before what happened, when I first found out that I was losing my hair, which uh, if you're in that seat right now, I feel for you 100% because it is terrible, it's scary, it's awful. I don't wish it upon anyone after having gone through what I've gone through on my hair loss journey. Because I know how detrimental it is to our self-image and self-confidence. But this is the thing that happens. You go through a stressful event, you get your hair loss, and then once you get your hair loss, you stress about your hair loss, just cause a negative feedback loop. 
So the stress that used to cause you hair loss, now you stress about the hair. So your focus becomes on the hair rather than on the root cause of the stress. So the way to get out of this is to firstly address the, the root cause that caused you stress and your hair loss. So that you have to do. But the second thing is to actually start thanking your body. Start appreciating what you have. Yes, this is also from a religious standpoint in my case, that we have to become more appreciative of what we have. Because it's so easy to get greedy and so easy to not really consider that there's always somebody that's gonna have it worse than you. So by just being happy and maintaining that happiness, I also think that you're feeding yourself with positive energy, giving your body that positive energy it needs in order to repair and heal itself too. And yes, this is kind of spiritual and there's not going to be any scientific evidence on this, but I've just noticed in my journey, me having, you know, quit my music career, my modeling career, everything just to deal with my hair loss and feeling so shitty about myself. This is something that has helped me tremendously and I can only recommend what I've done that has worked for me. Number seven, I started taking a lot of supplements. I've taken vitamin D because obviously there's no sun here in Sweden. Zinc, zinc and magnesium, omega-3. I also take iron. If we look at the vitamin deficiency that a lot of males tend to have, these are the ones that come up the most. So if you want to give it a go, that's great. I think you should always start with your diet and you know, being as I, I'm currently doing the carnivore diet, there's a lot, a lot of these vitamins in the diet that I eat, but it's always really good to just add that supplement because then you make sure to get everything in the right proportions that you need. Number eight, I've changed the way I work out. Now I only do calisthenics and body workouts. I found this guy who's amazing called Smooth. He does animal flow, which is super cool. So it's a lot of things you do on the ground, a lot of floor work, which helps you with coordination, but also these micro muscles that you have. Super awesome, you get a really good sweat from it. I kind of replaced that with my cardio day, but I feel so much more in touch and symmetric with my body, so that's amazing. Apart from that, I do like air squats, I do pull-ups, I do push-ups, and I just think that's more natural. You do natural body movement as opposed to just going in the gym and just lifting weights. I wanna have that longevity with my body. I wanna have that flexibility. I wanna be able to stretch mobility, and I really think that can help with blood flow too. Um, so not only longevity, being able to have a working body for a longer period of time and not being that, you know, 50, 40 year old that can't move or run around with their kids. I wanna be the active, cool granddad, even great granddad. And if you want, I can make more videos about that. My last point, number nine, is that what I'm doing is I'm super motivated to solve this puzzle of hair loss naturally. So I don't see my hair loss as a problem anymore, but I'm seeing it as, like I've said throughout the video, as a way that my body is telling me that I'm not healthy on the inside. And I can tell you why I also know this, because even though it's fucking disgusting, sorry, I have toenail fungus on one toe, and I've had this for the past three years. I've taken Lamisil or Terbenafine for treating my toenail fungus, it's never worked. First of all, the medication is Western medication. It is super detrimental to the liver, although the liver kind of recovers and repairs itself over time. You shouldn't actually try to do three treatments on it. But this is something I've been dealing with for the past three years. But while I was experimenting with veganism, but also the carnivore diet in June, of this year, I actually managed to get a lot of that toenail fungus off of my toe. I'm not gonna show you because you'll probably throw up and feel sick, but I'm just gonna let you know it's right there. And for me, that's also an indication that my body is not feeling super well. But being that toenail, skin, hair, all come from the same protein, keratin, even though I haven't seen the link between toenail fungus and hair loss, I do believe that there's something wrong with my health that I need to cure. Which is also why I go on the carnivore diet, cutting out carbs, which actually feed yeast, candida, and fungus, will probably actually help alleviate these symptoms, but actually also cure the root cause to my problem. And the last thing that I'm currently doing, which I've experimented with, I'm actually on day 11, is semen retention. This is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. I'm gonna do it throughout November, so no, not November, but maybe I'll actually wanna try 70 days. Yeah, we'll see about that, and if you guys want me to make another video on that, I'm very happy to do so. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it somewhat useful, and I shall see you in the next one.